And with a mighty toss, Apollo flung the bird into the heavens, doomed to never quench its thirst. Hi everybody, and welcome back to Stellar Saturdays. Hope y'all are having a good week. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about the constellation Corvus. Um, this constellation is known as a crow or a raven. <clears throat> Uh, it really depends upon which mytho mythos you're talking about. In my, ex in what I've kind of delved into today, um, a lot of the mythos considers the constellation a raven rather than a crow. Um, but this this is our little guy that we're talking about today. <coughs> uh, all images again um, are brought to you by the Hubble Image Station. Um, at least the ones that are actually of the galaxy and um, of the stars themselves. So check that out. It's a really cool site. <laughs> Alright, so let's kind of talk a little bit about this constellation today. Um, this video might be a little bit shorter than the last. I'm trying to cut down on a little bit of my rambling, so hopefully this is still an enjoyable experience for y'all. Um, so this constellation, it's located in the southern sky, and it's made up of four stars. Um, so let's take a look at that. We have the little four stars. It basically looks like a trapezoid. Um, and it's a really small one, and it's actually near Crater and Hydra, I believe, um, in the constellation stars. Um, so the four stars are Delta, Gamma, I always say this wrong, Episol and Beta, um, and they didn't really get too original with these names, unfortunately, so it's all basically like major, minor, minor, minor <laughs> stars of Corva. Um, so this is actually also paired um, where you, what galaxy this is in, it's called the Antenna Galaxy. Um, so let's see, yeah. There, there we go. <laughs> so, it it's literally named the Antenna Galaxy. <laughs> it makes no sense to me. But apparently when they named this galaxy, they named it because this tail here coming off of the galaxies, and actually it's not one galaxy, it's galaxies. Um, so pardon my speech on that. But apparently this tail here represented an antenna to the people who named the galaxies so it's kind of odd <laughs> um so that's a little quick blurb about that but the really interesting thing about this makeup is that the antenna galaxies are again multiple it's actually made up of 13 to 27 members of colliding galaxies basically and that's what actually produces this tail here is all of the star, oh, sorry, not the stars, uh, the gases coming off of the stars is basically what's creating that kind of swoop de doop effect. <laughs> um, and there is a meteor shower that is associated with the antenna galaxy as well as Corvus being the point of origin, um, and it's typically around once a year, uh, around June 17th. Again, those are all kind of like approximations for it. Uh, and then if you want to see what Corvus actually looks like in the night sky, here's an image. As you can see, yeah, I was right, woo, go me, <laughs> it was Hydra. <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> uh, so this is Corvus right here, the little trapezoid. Uh, you kind of have two blue stars, a yellow one and an orange one. And you have Hydra right over here. It looks like it's those two or three little minor stars right on the edge. Um, so this is kind of where it's located in the sky. And we can actually, unlike the Phoenix, which I went over last week, you guys can actually see Corvus from where we're at, I believe. Um, so it should be visible to us. I guess we'll go ahead and dive into the mythos of uh, Corvus. And while I'm talking about this, I'm gonna go ahead and bloop 
leave this little guy right up here for you guys to take a look at. Uh, now this is the illustration, uh, an older illustration of the night sky. So basically it's showing you where the stars are at and what they're supposed to depict. And as you can see, you have Corvus, Hydra, and then uh, the crater or goblet, chalice, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a cup. <laughs> so in the mythos, now, unlike the Phoenix, uh, Corvus doesn't have an extended mythos from across the globe. You'll see uh, it is mentioned in quite a few since uh, raven and crows are kind of quite common across the world. Um, it is mentioned in quite a few different mythos, but it's not like a predominant lore in a lot of them. Uh, but there's three stories that we're going to go over. Two is from Greek mythology, and then the final and last one is kind of a quick blurb about Irish mythos, since ravens and crows typically have a very predominant standing in Irish mythology versus a lot of other different type of mythos. Um, I guess I'll start with a quick little blurb. You guys can also find uh, stories about Corvus in Babylonian stories. Um, and again, it was linked to a raven who sat on the tail of a serpent that was close with its Babylonian god, and it had quite a significance to the rain god. Um, and as you can see Hydra here um, in this picture, that's actually the tail of the serpent that it's talking about. So we'll go ahead and I guess I'll go ahead and read off a quick blurb about the first Greek uh, the first Greek mythos of Corvus was pretty much of a betrayal or how the sun god Apollo felt betrayed <laughs> by Corvus. Um, so in Greek mythos, the raven's feathers were actually white. They weren't black. Um, so this is a funny story. In Greek mythos, the raven's feathers were white. But after the bird was assigned to watch over a woman Apollo fell in love with, the woman, Cor Coronius, fell in love with another man. When the re raven decided to report this back to Apollo, the sun god, he was so enraged that the bird did absolutely nothing to prevent uh, this, this betrayal of heartache that he scorched the raven's feathers to forever basically be blackened. Um, which is also why ravens are seen as black now. Uh, and let's see, the second tale is how Corvus got into the, the heavens, basically, the, the sky as a constellation. A lot of Greek mythos, again, they'll have a lot of credit to being in the Greek sky because, or sorry, they'll have a lot of mythos behind um, being flung into the sky or being placed there as reverence or torment or something. It's actually kind of um, heartbreaking. It's, it's very much a yin and yang with the Greeks. <laughs> uh, so in the second tale where it's going to be a little bit about how Corvus got flung into the sky. So, in this tale, the bird was in charge of collecting uh, waters uh, from the water of life with a goblet that Apollo had assigned him. For boating. <laughs> Instead of collecting the waters, the bird actually spent many days around a fig tree waiting for the fruit to ripen before eating it. So basically, instead of going straight to the waters, picking it up in this chalice and bringing it back to Apollo, he was flying there, he saw a delicious fig tree, and instead of just saying, okay, it's not ripe yet, <laughs> the raven decided to wait there another couple days <laughs> before actually eating the fig tree, grabbing the waters, and then bringing them back to Apollo. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Uh, but Apollo did not find this so funny, and he was actually very annoyed with uh, the bird's greed that he cursed it and threw him into the heavens, just out of reach out of the, the goblet, therefore he would never be able to quench his thirst. So as you can see in the depiction up here, um, 
this is very much a uh, not not one of the happier constellations so Corvus wasn't really put up into the sky according to Greek mythology because of his reverence or standing it was more as a punishment to basically because of your your greed and gluttony and sloth you were thrown up here to basically never be able to satisfy any of those things <laughs> so in irish mythos ravens were actually considered uh in celtic mythology they were seen as messengers between the mortal world and the world of spirits so they basically communed between the living and the dead they're also associated with a god bran i'm sorry who was a son of a giant and the sea god so bran was also considered to be known as the god of poetry music prophecy and sovereignty uh as much as i dug i couldn't it kind of conflicts with uh how the ravens are seen in celtic mythology and why a god of poetry music and prophecy would be affiliated with uh, a raven that is supposedly seen as a messenger between worlds um one thing that i could kind of justify as is though um in order to commune with his parents a uh, giant and uh, sea god possibly needed a raven in order to commune with them or he was gifted to him uh, as a great feat that he had accomplished Bram was also, he, Bram is one of the gods that was kind of known to work his way into godhood, uh, which was basically through accomplishing all these great feats and wars and things like that. Um, so that's just kind of an interesting tidbit from the Irish mythos, but that was all I had today for Mr. Corvus here. A little bit of a tragedy. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I tried to make this video kind of short and sweet for y'all. And I hope you guys had a great day. Alrighty, see you guys later. Bye-bye.